All right, Magnanimous Monday. Hey, love. Hey, love. Hey, love. I'm Jesse C. Love, teacher love, coach love. This is the Sun Price segment for January 18th, 2021. Blessed Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Day. My service to the world, the community. I appreciate your time. Thank you for tuning in. Those of you that share, I appreciate you. Those of you that come in for the replay, thanks for giving me some of your time in the replay. Save our marriage empowerment with prayer, reflection, inspiration, courageous conversation, and encouragement. Mm -hmm. Episodes for those who are healthy-minded or desire to become healthy-minded in their marriage, moving in their marriage faithfully, lovingly, respectfully, progressively, adding happiness mm -hmm. to the happy that came to you. Mm -hmm. My goal is that these segments or a segment, some information that I present will help you stimulate an enthusiasm to reinvent and continuously improve or assist in improving your marriage to create it as God, our creator, originally designed it. Because I don't believe we're supposed to be alone. Hmm. And that's even in part of that basic instructions before leaving earth that a lot of us look at. Marriage is a higher level of commitment to individuals coming together with all of their experiences, traditions, cultures, background. Not only just praying, becoming interdependent. So you go from where you were with yourself and then where you're going to become with your partner because marriage magnifies. We're supposed to magnify one another when we are married. Mm -hmm. There's different benefits. It's a ministry, I believe. Not just for inside of the structure of the home, but neighbors, community, and even the world if the world sees us. Infidelity, misery, miscommunication, abuse, drifting, or divorce, which is an acronym that I, it dropped in my spirit for I'm mad. It doesn't have to be that. Wonderful, exciting, reviving, enthusiastic, grateful, lovingly loyal, <sighs> astoundingly and dynamically divine. Meaning that we're glad. Hey, do it. How you doing? I do apologize, y'all. I came on later than what I would be, but we had family Zoom time. So, yeah. I think and believe there's a formula for success, just like there's one for failure, just depending upon what we do, how much work we put into it. We don't know what we don't know until we find out what it is that we don't know, and information changes situations. Applied knowledge changes everything. And, hey... We all can learn something, always. Me, nope, I'm not in covenant yet. I spent a lot of years in our married and engaged couples ministry listening to several married couples, and I still talk to them. So le gleaning, learning, listening, praying, reading, researching, all of that, and what they continuously tell me, that's part of this. And prayer changes everything, all right? Great evening, great evening, well, great afternoon, great evening, great morning. <laughs> and as I say, with this assignment, if you have a problem with it, take it up with the Lord. Because until my creator tells me to stop, I'm going to keep on going. We are on number 50. I believe you've been doing this. 50. And it's been something. All of this. All of this. Front and back for most of them. If God don't tell me to put this into a book, I don't know. Anyway, <sighs> problems, problems, solutions is what today was about. What happens to and for us, our creator planned it before we were born. With a relationship, mm -hmm. we'll walk in the word. Uh -huh. We'll tell the truth and have honesty, but we won't use that as a weapon. That's the bad part. How people, are, I'm just keeping it real. And then they're keeping it real. They're using the truth as a weapon. That's not what the truth is for. And since we're still on husbands, uh, I don't know why there's, uh -huh. somebody I heard today, they were like, a husband doesn't look for what he can get away with. And I was like, wow. He calls himself Prince. I got to remember what his name is. Prince something. But he's a married man too. Faithfully married. Always talking about being faithful, husbands being faithful, taking their rightful place and being a leader. 
provider, protector, covering in their family with their wives. Young man, too. Yeah. For those marriages that may be being attacked by the enemy, smile. You must be doing something right and growing because the enemy doesn't attack his own. We don't see the enemy usually attacking their own. Crisis shows adversity and growth ability. Marriage can, will, and oftentimes may have problems. We come with problems. We have problems in our singlehood. And of course, we're going to have problems when we come into the marriage. It's just that when you have that too, you got somebody else that you can bounce off from and bounce to. Those of us that are single, we got to figure it out all on our own. But when you with that right partner, the right connection, y'all can get it together. You use your strengths. Where one is weak, the other is strong and vice versa. So yeah, your experiences, what happened in this, or if you've ever gone through that, then because you have that experience, y'all can talk about it together and fix it or rectify it or alleviate it, whatever, but it won't be as difficult. It won't be as heavy because you're not doing it alone or just with yourself or you know, God send some help. Your help is right there. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Again, that commitment involves two unique individuals joining together with their own experiences and depending upon the lifestyle decisions and how the residuals of the choices are handled or avoided, learning how to coexist may be quite challenging. The difficulty can arise in responsibility or feeling of obligation towards, and this, I, I was a little surprised that this came up already but I've seen it when someone was single and then they were taking care of a parent and then they get married and that parent still expects them to take care of and that's when the whole mother-in-law father-in-law those conflicts arise because it's like the adult child is now your priority is now with your wife and the both of you have to decide if it's in your budget to Give finances to the parent. If it's not in your budget, you have to be able to say, well, I can't do that today because we build in our home now. A new husband's widowed single mother may have always had her son's time and handiwork four to six days out of the week. That's going to change when he gets married. He may be contributing half of his income to his mother. That's probably going to change because it's leave and cleave. Unless he's going to use his gifts to start another income coming in to be able to use that income. After his relationship with God, the first human relationship connection is now with his wife. And vice versa, of course, for those of you that are like, what about the wife? Y'all already know. Everything that I'm saying, it, it really does apply to the wife. Not everything. A lot of what I'm saying really applies to the wife, too. If you just listen and turn what can be turned. When it comes to a marriage, no one else is higher than for them than either of them. Before someone chooses to get puffed up about children, go back and look at Genesis. In chapter 2, verse 21 through 24, when our higher power created humans, it was man and woman, them together, pulling the woman. Children weren't there. So the first relationship was between the husband and the wife not parent and child leaving parents versus being united with the spouse holds more weight at that united in the husband and wife dynamic make a vow to one another for life they're one while the children come later they must be cared for responsibly a decrease in that responsibility happens as they guide their children on how to be independent and take care of themselves. And I've said parenthood never ends, but the responsibility and the load starts to decrease. And then when it does switch around, you got to talk. If you're married, you have to talk about the boundaries that will need to be set in place. The change of independence increases when children mature and marry and stop being the pro predominant source providing the necessities of living. Why? It's then that the children have another human relationship that proceeds to bond to their parents. Children are going to leave and then they're going to start their own families. Oh, 
The way I don't even know which part you're talking about. <laughs> oh. Where mommy can't expect her son to still give her all of that quality time and money. She can't. That time must now be given or shared with his wife. As I said, the money, if he figures out how to use his gifts to increase his income without taking time from his wife, great. That doesn't mean he goes and works more hours because now he's pulling his time from his wife because of what he was given to mommy or daddy. I'm just saying mommy. If, if he can figure that out without depriving his wife, wonderful. To ensure what, what, that whatever his wife may ask from him and it doesn't deprive the the mom of what he's doing, okay. Or the dad of what he's doing, okay. Long as you remember, that's 21 hours you spend it with your spouse. And if you have children, that's 15 hours that you spend in with them. And you got about 16 to 23 that you do for yourself. And that means all of the household duties that you usually do. And you're wanting to watch TV and things of that nature. You can go ahead and fit mom, dad in that time. That's your time. Those are your hours. A healthy marriage, the husband and wife establish and maintain their home first. Neither of their families outside of them have significant decision-making rights. Mom and dad can't, mm -mm. sister and brother can't, cousin, niece, nephew, none of those. Mm -mm. They're not a burden or burdened by those family members. Blood is thicker than water. That is true. But a covenant is thicker than blood. Because the covenant is not just with down here. You make that covenant and vow first to a higher power. So there must be time. There must be patience. You have, you need that to get to know each other. Everybody's changing every day. So you don't have time to be concerned so much about everybody outside of the home. You can get what you can get from what they say and see how you can apply it to yourself. But None of them have a dominant decision. None of them. It's about the husband and the wife and seeing what works for them. Not comparing it to another marriage. Because y'all hear me talk about E.T. all the time. Dr. Thomas. He ain't got no problem. Ironing his wife's clothes. Washing dishes. Mopping the floor. Things that people say are the wife's duties. It's like, if I can take that load off my wife and I know how to do it anyway, I'm going to do it care what nobody else say they can call me the word that's going out and around now is simp please <laughs> he's been married for 30 years since he was 20 years old please if a simp can do that faithfully lovingly and he ain't got no issues when it comes to his physical intimacy needs because sometimes he's telling her give me a break <laughs> just chill huh? I'm cool <laughs> mm. okay so, yeah at no point should either spouse feel like the other is always going to see about a healthy and capable family member parent, sibling, cousin, niece, nephew none of that the marriage must prevent blood or kinfolk interference from causing strife within mm -mm. don't do it that also means if a family member comes by unannounced, uninvited, you know, it might be your brother coming in. He hungry, he knock on the door, open the door. Hey, you know, bro, brother-in-law come in straight to the refrigerator, didn't ask nothing. What you doing? Now, if he come in with groceries sometimes and, you know, things of that nature, then okay. Hey, I brought groceries, thought we could just sit down and eat. I'm going to put this in your refrigerator, you know, just in case I come by. I call first, and at least this is here. Is it all right if I do that? You got to get permission for all that. You don't just pop up. And the family member who does it, of the family member, so if the husband's brother comes, then the husband is the one that needs to say something to the brother. If the wife's mama comes, then the wife is the one that needs to say something to the mom. Yeah. In the case of a widow, the unmarried children and grandchildren are the ones who are supposed to step up and take care of the widow or widower. Not the one who just got married or 
you know, even a few years down the line, there's still unmarried children and grandchildren. Y'all are supposed to step up first. Then let me know if something, you know, the married couple know if something is still going on. There have to be parameters and boundaries that are clear as to where they will help. During the engagement phase, that's the time when families are getting to know one another. And if you didn't talk about your philosophies, your principles, your, your financial planning beforehand, your investments, your spending, your budgeting, that's during the engagement time. You're supposed to talk about that. Well, look, this is what I do with my mom or this is what I do with my dad. And depending upon whether both of y'all coming in with finances, there's a budget that needs to be created. Are you going to still be able to do that and not create financial situations and financial issues and financial problems, financial strife, which a lot of people say a lot of divorces happen because of finances. Well, what did you do to bring the finance problem? Did you budget it beforehand? Are you doing something that you shouldn't be doing? Are you not talking with one another? A healthy husband is going to always talk because it's not just me. It's not, it's our the the me and the my and the I change into the we, the us. <laughs> mm -mm. So you both make decisions together. Something arises, parent calls because the car broke down, they need a new tire. Maybe y'all decide, all right, instead of us going on this weekend getaway, we can go ahead and put that towards the tire. But that's a decision that you both make. Versus they call and it's like, well, daughter, I need a tire. And daughter just says, all right, here you go. Didn't say anything to husband. Mm -mm, that's going to create, possibly create a problem. We want to avoid that. Your priority is to one another. Mm -hmm. There's a budget. Siblings, cousins, parents. No. Nope. Y'all, you have your place. But then there's a boundary. And as I talked about Tony Gaskins several times, when he first got married, there came a point where his mother and his sister had something bad to say about his wife. They didn't like something that she did, the way she was dressing, the way she was organizing the house, the way she decorated. They were calling because they wanted something. And then when he was like, I got to talk with my wife, and they, they got an attitude. And he was like, he had to cut them off. He was like, I cut my mama and my sister off. Just so they knew there was a boundary. Don't talk about my wife. I'm saying I got to discuss this with her. We a team. If she say no, I'm not going to go over what she say and be like, all right, yes. Just like if her parents, mother, called and said something and I was like well no we can't do that right now they, she gotta wait absolutely open transparent communication being real I always say lay it put it all on the table this is what's going on this is what I'm accustomed to this is what's needed this is what's wanted it, it's creating like a spreadsheet you got your columns going y'all sitting down and talking about it even if you have to do it weekly then you do it. Whatever you can do to keep the enemy from coming in and building up an issue. Whoever is the one that can budget the best or save, then that's the one that's in charge of that. Regardless, who was it? Oh, goodness. I think it was a, a pastor that I was listening to over the weekend where he was like, when he came into the marriage, his credit was bad. And his wife was like, there is, ah, yep, Pastor Hannah. He was, his wife was like, there is no reason why you should have this kind of credit being the kind of businessman and man that you are. And he let her organize and get everything together. They are completely debt free. Bought several different properties. Have built a brand new I mean, the church is, oh my gosh, it's astounding what they've done, even though right now, and it, it was completed during the pandemic. Nobody's in it right now, but to see it. And then there came a time right before this pandemic or with the pandemic, 
his wife is a nurse. And he was like, you ain't going back to work in this late last year. And she was like, you can't stop me or tell me no from working my talents, my gifts and serving. And he was like, you know what? You're right. And she's been working this entire pandemic. He was like, he don't ask her about the money. He don't care nothing about that. She's doing what she's doing because he doesn't want to snuff out her life, snuff out her light. And they get along just fine. They've been married, I think it was 25 years. And she had been married before. He hadn't. Doing very well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Being able to tell family, this is a boundary, don't cross that. And being able to say no. If they get mad, okay, they'll be back. If they don't, you know, build a bridge, get over it. Like water flowing. You can't pick up the same water twice. The river's still moving. Eventually, they'll be back. They'll get over it. But your covenant is to your spouse. They'll get over it. They'll, they'll be all right. The husband must protect his wife as the wife must protect her husband to pressure the marriage to not pressure to preserve the marriage and cultivate companionship they must always keep one another as priority and even when children are blessed into the union as i say if your wife is breastfeeding and she has put some in the freezer and some in the refrigerator so that she's not always getting up every two to three hours to feed the baby. And you don't, as a husband, feel like all her time is going there. All her energy is going there. Guess what? You get up sometimes. Let her sleep. Grab one of them bottles. There you go. Baby crying because it needs to be changed. It's a partnership. Get up. Go handle it. Then you won't feel like, oh, she's spending. There's some, they were unhealthy. For a while. It's like she's always spending time with the baby. It's like, well, that baby is very dependent. Extremely. It's like, have you ever seen where she will fall asleep and the baby is like on her breast, on her nipple, and she's asleep? <laughs> she's tired. Not tired. She's tired. So once you start helping in that area, you'll bond more too. And then y'all work together. You'll see. That it's not just she's taking time from you. There is an infant that is completely dependent. Once you see that, you'll see. And as a child gets older, they become a little more dependent or independent. Eh, you know, things of that nature. But your wife is your priority. Your husband is your priority. Who was it? Ah, it was Pastor Hannah. He was like, in the beginning of their marriage... He was so focused on the church, he could have lost his wife because he did it wrong. He made the church his priority. Thankfully, she was still there because he kind of made up for it, but he was like, he was wrong. And she had every right to just be like, I'm out of here. You know, who is it? Bishop Noel Jones talks about it often with his marriage. He was so involved and always traveling and always with the church. He forgot. His priority was his wife. And he's talked about that often too. What happened? He lost his wife. He got to church though. But he says, if he had to do it all over again, he would do it differently. His wife was supposed to come first. The only one higher than that wife or husband is our creator. The first human relationship is your spouse. And then it carries on to everyone else. So, yeah. The love there. Let me go back and see what you said. Do it. Absolutely communication. Oh, yep. Spouse should always come first. And that's part of, you know, with me giving the breakdown of the hours, of which I don't remember exactly which book I got it from. I think it was about needs. That 21 hours, that 15 hours, and the commute time, if you spend in two hours of commute time one way, five 
days a week, whereas now most people are not. That's taken away from your family time. That's taken away from your wife time. That's taken away from your children time. It's taken away from yourself time. And then we don't get enough sleep. That seven hours is the minimum. Because otherwise, your brain starts getting eaten away. You start noticing your memory. You start noticing that you're cranky. You start noticing all kinds of health issues. Your brain shrinks when you don't get enough sleep. So seven is like the minimum. And then even trying to catch up on it doesn't really work. All right, forgive me. I got almond in my teeth and I don't, it's bothering me. But yeah, communication, chess game, I would always say. You know, I don't know how to play chess yet, but yeah. Oh, you both protect each other. I have to learn how to play chess. That ain't been on my my to-do list, but I do need to learn how to play chess. <laughs> hmm. You don't let anything get to you. You're the queen, your princess, you protect. And then the princess, the queen, protects the king. Yeah. Hmm. I think I'll be able to do it. Day 18 of the Love Dare dedication says, Love inspires purity. Because of immoralities, each man is to have his own wife, and each woman is to have her own husband. 1 Corinthians 7 2. That's the way it was in the beginning. And then what was it? After Cain and Abel. I think it was it Cain. One of his children is brought the immorality of having more than one wife. Prior to that. If I have it right. I think it was Cain that killed Abel. I think. Um, yeah. God designed marriage to keep us sexually pure. The one who conceived the beauty of sexuality also ordained ordained marriage as the perfect way for us to enjoy his gift to the fullest. And how they say the married bed is undefiled. You don't bring any anything in it to defile it. God desires for us to have the rich blessings of his best. He created a context for sexuality that always promotes love, honors purity, guards safety, and rewards lifelong commitment. Sex, making love, is God's holy wedding gift to seal and bless the covenant a husband and wife have made. Those who seek to satisfy their sexual desires outside of God's design fall into the poisonous trap of sinning against their own body, their spouse, and God. I'm guessing that means future spouse. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get all them soul ties and all them different souls that infiltrate yours. And then you got some healing to do. It's best to avoid that. If you can. Yeah, just, just avoid it. <laughs> if cultures honor God's holy design, woo, sexually transmitted diseases and unwed pregnancies would cease. Wow. Marriage is God's ideal solution to sexual immorality. As you fully meet your spouse's needs, you're helping them walk in purity. But purity is much more than just avoiding affairs. It extends to keeping your eyes, viewing habits, and emotional attachments honoring to God. This brings a joyful peace to your marriage that only purity can offer. Ooh, the prayer says, Father God, keep us faithful and pure in our marriage. Help us to guard against anything that threatens our intimacy. And bless the bond we have in our sexual relationship. We and the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Those boundaries include I'm I'm every while reading this, I'm thinking about those boundaries. Cause if you let somebody, a parent or whomever, come in between that, your intimacy is probably going to decrease. Yeah. Mom sister auntie come over and they don't like the way your wife has designed the home and they start talking and you don't say nothing wife may feel slighted and you will not be coming to her later on talking about anything physically intimate 
It's going to be like, how you let them talk about me? What is that? Jump in the broom. I don't know why it just popped in, but I have to write it down. Where during the day before the wedding or the day of the wedding, I forget her name, but she had just found out that who had raised her all of her life was not her biological mom. And the fiance, his mom, is the one that didn't want the, she didn't want the marriage, no way. She just came in between. Oh, wait. I'm trying to get something to write so I don't forget what I'm saying. And instead of, oh, the whole, oh, wait, when they, when they met, when she finally met the mom to come and find out that her fiance had kept his mom away from her because she sabotaged every relationship that he had. So when they went to the island for the wedding, she had brought a pie and the fiance was like, oh, well, great. I get to taste, you know, a pie. It's one of his favorites. She knew nothing about it. And the mom was like, no, it's his pie. It's family. It's for, it's for him. I was like, but we are going to be family. And she was still trying to be, you know, nice all about it. And then later on, just everything that she would do to try to get the mom to accept her wasn't happening. She didn't want it. She was like, she couldn't come across. Loretta Devine was the mom. Yes. I see her face, but I just don't remember. And... And I see the guy and I just, his, his name ain't coming to my head right now. Loretta Devine as the mom was one that didn't have any boundaries whatsoever. No matter how much somebody tried to say something to her, she didn't have boundaries. You know, it was her little boy. And the mom, Loretta, because she didn't have her husband. It was more like he was her husband instead of just her son. And by the time he finally came to realize that, he hadn't protected his fiance. And she told him, you didn't protect me. He didn't stop his mom from what she had done. He didn't ever put her, I don't mean, not put her in her place, but at least say something prior to her being hurt. And it was like, you were supposed to protect me. And you didn't. Just because it's your mom, mm -mm, you are supposed to protect me. And he finally got it after she got hurt. He was fortunate that she came back. That, you know, the mom went and was able to talk to her. And, you know, you got a good man. He loves you. This, that, and the other. And she went back. But that could have been very detrimental. And for the mom to finally realize, you know... Don't bogard your way. Paula Patton, thank you. The fiance. Even with the jump in the broom. It's, it's tradition. Well, this was my wedding. <laughs> and she eventually, you know, was able to compromise and put it in. But it's like, don't demand. You can request. You can ask. This is what I want for the day that is mine. And yeah, he he's your little boy, but he's about to be my husband. Woo! Well, thank you, Lord. I That just, boom. Deposit that. Jump in the broom movie. Perfect examples. So, those of you husbands that may be on here, wives that may be on here that didn't comprehend what it was that I was saying, that is one movie that will give you a lot of lessons. Jump in the broom. And if you listen to Loretta Devine's friend, if you listen to, gosh, Lee, his name just ain't coming in my head. Laz, Laz Alonzo, you listen to his cousin, you listen to his best friend and what they say, the cousin that was like, man, you know, you out, you, you got to watch the movie. They were out. The day, the night before, whatever. And the cousin, the way he was talking. About to cause strife into the union. Oh, you can just go on, man. I know you, you know, she been sitting up saying it's been six months. It's been this. And you ain't been with her. Man, I know you. Mm-mm. 
and eventually last punched them. You know what? Just in case some of y'all ain't seen the movie, it may be on Netflix. Jump in the room. Watch that. Those of you that are in the process of becoming husbands and those of you that are husbands and you're not quite sure what I mean by your priority being each other, that's a good one. That's a good one. Faith makes it possible. Doesn't say it's going to be easy, but it makes it possible. And it's a lot of patience that come in that. With the, when all is said and done, you're your spouse's 10 out of 10. And when I mean, when I say that, it's ironing, sharpening iron. It's about the team, the partnership, the unique work that you both have, your character, your integrity, your spirituality, the advancements that's supposed to come, the amplification that comes when you join with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Change and growth. It's great to be loved. It's great to love. Both of them. Marriage is still a great idea. Mm -hmm. We believe we, the, we receive, we concede, but we don't deceive. Mr. Les Brown's acronym for work. W is the willingness to do what it takes. Be that willing vessel without causing harm. O is to have optimism, to believe in good and see that it's going to work out for our good. Without causing harm. Don't intentionally cause harm. Our creator doesn't put more on us than we can bear. We're the ones that be putting the loads on. The R is to reinvent self. To go from good to great. The K is kindred spirit. To not only be able to socialize. To also have right relationship. To be able to ask for help. And to be able to accept help. I had a problem in that. It took so much for me to ask for help that by the time I did ask for help, people were always like, oh, you're so strong. You got it. Mm -mm. Now I'm, I'm learning. Hey, I need some help. And when I ask for help, you know, I, I need some help. Stop all that. I'm, I ain't strong. No, I'm resilient, but I ain't strong. Mm -mm. And as I said, I started it yesterday with saying, if you are a husband or a wife and you use anything in any of these segments, and it's beneficial to you, or if you use it and something doesn't work quite right, let me know. You know, if it does work and you share it, please tag me in it. You know, I, I really want to see, you know, we on 50. And I'm still like, can I go to the wise? <laughs> Man, I love y'all husbands. I do. I do. And yesterday I did a thank you because I started thinking about all the husbands that I do know that are faithful and demonstrate the love that they have for their wives. And it just made me cry just thinking about it. It's like, man, to keep that hope, we just don't see it very often. But I have plenty of examples. Matter of fact, I had a, a husband over here today. My uncle. Been married 50 years. 50. Man. And the way that they look at each other now is still the way that they were looking at each other then. And, you know, two sons? Yeah. So I enjoy marriages. I do. But yeah. This is our Save Our Marriage and Empowerment. Save Our Marriage Empowerment with prayer, reflection, inspiration, courageous conversation, and encouragement. Episode number 50. Yeah, jump in the broom. I may just watch that just to talk a little bit more about it tomorrow. I have no idea what the chapter is on tomorrow. But just for my own. I always at least try to go back and see why something drops in my spirit. Yeah. Mm, I don't know what you were saying about so true. This coming Sunday is 36 years. Oh, man. That, that's. That means I was in the, what? Fifth grade. <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Wow. That's a blessing. 
do it. That's a blessing. And your wife do have you wrapped around her finger. I don't care what you say. <laughs> That's a good thing, though. <laughs> oh, because you have her wrapped around yours, too. That is a beautiful blessing. 36 years. Mm. <laughs> oh gosh that's a beautiful blessing don't do what ah, this Sunday wow what made you pick January 23rd no 24th it's the 24th what made you pick that day wow 36 years. Your daughter, Asia, too. What? It was in the fifth grade when y'all got married? <laughs> Man. Right now, other than an uncle that just left, my great uncle. I think he's the only living, so I think I have like two, two living that have 40 years or more. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, your daughter has you wrapped around your, her finger. I've heard of that. Her birthday. And y'all got married on her birthday. That is one of the easiest ways to never forget your anniversary as well. You met her on her birthday. That's so awesome. Then turned around and got married on her birthday. That's so beautiful. That is so beautiful. I can't remember the other, the married couple that I met that blessed the house with a stove. Why they chose the date that they chose. But I think he said they were about to be 60 years. In May, May 31st, I'd have to go back. I don't even remember when that was, what episode that was, but yeah, I still have their contact information. So that's beautiful. So I'm going to have to write that down. So when I come live on Sunday, make sure I say happy anniversary to y'all. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah. A lot of my classmates from high school. One, two, three, four. Four that I know who cross my timeline have been married 20 years or more. Yep. And a couple of them married their high school sweethearts. So, yeah. Oh, okay. 36 years together, 34 years married. That's still more than 80% of my life. So, <laughs> that's awesome. That's beautiful. May, another May. That's a, I can dig it. nothing wrong with that and the fact that you remember i mean on top of the fact that it's her birthday hey it's all the more special that means that you must have known right then why you wait two years <laughs> oh but yeah that's beautiful pivotal moment and unforgettable. Mm. I would ask what you got planned, but your wife, I don't, I, she might see it and it might spoil what you're going to do. So I ain't going to ask to share it on, you know, the day of or the day after. Because <laughs> my videos are not private. None of them ever are. Well, at least I don't aim for them to be. Most of them, so I don't want to spoil nothing. But yeah.
That's cool. It's her birthday. That's awesome. Cool. That's cool. That's a daily. Sunday just gonna be a bigger bang. <laughs> That's beautiful. So what you got planned? <laughs> it, no. It's cool. I think that's beautiful. That's beautiful. A lot of I don't hear too many people that do that. I don't hear too many that celebrate the day that they met. Cuz aren't that there aren't that many that I know that met on somebody's birthday. But I do know a couple that got married on the birthday. Yeah, he, he didn't know what he was. <laughs> it's his loss. Mm, mm, mm. That was probably an eye-opening lesson for you, too. That probably was. She has a boyfriend. He ain't here with her. He with his homies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm, ooh. That just said I'm low on battery. So I'm going to have to go because indeed the way, indeed, probably kicking himself now. Oh, well. Unless he, you know, he found a new one to actually do what he was supposed to do in the first place. But that one, the girl is mine. That's, you know, <laughs> she yours. But that's sweet. I, I'm going to go before this cuts you off without, you know, me saying be love, walk in love, and do everything in love. I may end up watching Jump in the Broom. If I don't get into this room with Iyanla tonight for this 40 days of abundance and meditation and journaling, then I'm going to watch Jump in the Broom. That's what I'll do. Just so I can see what I may not have seen. Because it dropped in my spirit for something. Always do it. God always knows the plans designed and set for us. It was not by coincidence. I call it a godsidence. You were supposed to be there at that time. And thankfully, you were willing to step out on faith. And seize the opportunity. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially if quality time is one of her love languages. Wow. I knew it before my phone cuts off because I'm like downtown low. Ah, like yeah, okay. <laughs> it's been great communicating with you. Thank you for talking with me and sharing parts of your marital bliss and dating life. But yeah, that's a lesson. Those are lessons too. Somebody may need to have seen that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead and, and and not be where you should be. Somebody else can walk right on up in there and snatch. But it ain't even taking. It's more of you wasn't doing what you were supposed to do. And there was a light bulb that said, I can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good night, bro. Always a pleasure. Thank you for your time talking with me, coming in. Somebody needed to see that. I don't know who, but somebody needed to see that. Yes, Lord. All right, y'all. 
that was episode number 50 on this Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Day. Wow. Can you imagine even being Miss Coretta and how Woo. Yeah, let me let me not get into that. That may make me be on here for another hour and I ain't got no battery to do that. So, appreciate y'all. Love you. Creator says the same. I'll see y'all again tomorrow. Or maybe a little bit earlier than right now. Yeah. We shall see. Mm -hmm. Saving our marriage empowerment. Prayer. Reflection. Inspiration. Courageous conversation. And encouragement. For you. Somebody you know. Myself included. Yeah. Love you. Be love.